Hey, Scott here. Welcome to episode eight in I'm Building a Canoe. This video will cover fiberglassing the outer and inner hull. Thank you to Total Boat for sponsoring this part of the project and supplying the epoxy and supplies for this. Um, if this is your first video, I encourage you to go back and watch the previous ones and how we got to this point. If you've been following along, I hope you're enjoying. We're getting close to the end and make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you get notifications of future videos. The next one we will start to add the trim work and then we're getting really close to being done. So enjoy! So now that the outer hull was nice and sanded smooth, we could roll out the fiberglass cloth, just letting it drape over the ends, and then we started applying epoxy. So for this project, Total Boat supplied us with their high performance 2-in-1 epoxy, as well as the metered pumps. This made it really easy to get the right mixture each time in each batch. My dad took charge of mixing up each batch while I applied it with the chip brush, just adding enough to soak through the cloth into the wood. After approximately 20 minutes, I would take a squeegee and get any excess off into what's called the grunge can. Basically just a cut with a slit that would squeegee off the squeegee. And then we'd discard the rest. This process was completed until we reached the other end. Working the cloth at the end took a little extra time trying to make sure we got out any wrinkles and then I added one more strip to cover over the stems just to help protect in the future. By the time the first coat was done, we grabbed a quick bite of lunch and then started rolling on the second coat. It's crucial to do this while the first coat's still wet to save having to sand. And this just starts to fill in the cloth a little bit more. The third coat was applied just like the second, and then once all that was dry, I could cut off the excess cloth with a razor knife. With the two end station molds loose, it was time to flip this over onto the cradles I made from some scrap 2x4s and carpet. I think the next step proved to be more difficult than I expected, and nobody mentioned it in any books or videos, but sanding the inside of the hole with the curves working against what your sander is set up for on flat surfaces proves to be a little bit difficult and creates quite a mess. But nonetheless, I worked away at it over a couple days with lots of 60 and then 80 grit sandpaper trying to get the best curve I could. I had to get creative up in the stem areas because the orbital sander was too wide to get very deep. I found the oscillating sander worked pretty well for that area. And then I moved on to patching and filling any cracks or holes to make sure we get a good wet out on the fiberglass in the next step. Then on to more sanding. I learned the lesson from doing the outer hole not to over apply and uh, that really paid off here. Next, I worked on prepping some pieces for the bulkhead. These will go in at each end and hide the areas that were hard to see, and also add some character and detail. It was a matter of ripping some poplar and some more cedar in a few strips, then glued them up overnight. Once the glue was set, I pulled them out of the clamp and then moved on to the planer to get a uniform thickness few passes and this was taken care of. 
So I jumped over to the bandsaw and cut this in half, also called reed sawing. This will give two book match pieces at each end. Then back to the planer to get those evened up. Then I moved on over to old Ned Sanders and got these smoothed out. So it would take very little hand sanding to be ready to go. I gave a couple quick passes with the orbital, moving up to 120 grit. Then using a cardboard template I made, I traced that onto each of these pieces. Then jumped over the bandsaw to cut that out, leaving a little bit extra to work with. With my dad back in the shop, we were ready for the inner hull. We gave it a quick wipe down and then spread out the cloth. And then much like the outer hull, we started wetting this out. This also proved a little difficult as gravity was working against you and set it in your favor, like on the outer. Continued to work on both sides, wetting and then squeegeeing out. We had to get a little creative in the stems to get that to wrap and fold over nicely over top of each other. But again, with the bulkheads, that area will be hidden on the finished product. I had a couple ideas in mind on how I wanted to put the logo on the outer hull. Using the laser engraver, I cut out some veneer I made and applied that with epoxy. And now we're ready for the second layer of epoxy on the inside, much like the outer. Just kept rolling on to start filling in the cloth. Also added some more epoxy over those logos. I mixed up some more epoxy. I started to get good at this by now and then worked on adding the logo to the inner hull. This sits center and is much larger than what's on the outside. Once the first couple layers of epoxy were cured, I sanded that out to work on getting a smooth, flat surface, then backed it off and gave it a wipe down with alcohol. I then added a flood coat of epoxy just so it would fill in any uneven areas and level that out around the edges. I worked on shaping the bulkheads to get those bevels just right so it would fit nice and flush in the back. My small hand plane worked great for this. I was ready to permanently put the bulkheads in place. So using epoxy, I sealed the edges and then worked on the cloth. Then added some epoxy to the hole and then started spreading the cloth out. This proved to be a little difficult, there wasn't a lot of space, and I had to get creative clamping it to hold it in there while it cured. Repeated the process for the other end, and then let it set overnight. I now had sanded the inner hole. That wasn't much worth watching, and it was ready to fiberglass in the outside of the bulkhead to hold it in place as well as seal it from the elements.
One of the final steps for this phase was adding the third layer of epoxy to the entire hull. Again, using a foam brush like earlier, just start spreading that out, trying to get a nice even coat without any runs. It's amazing watching the colors of this wood come to life when they get wetted out. I hope you enjoyed this episode and watching the canoe come to life with the fiberglass and epoxy. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for new video notifications, like, comment, and share. There's also a link below to any tools or products used during this video.